Welcome to this video from In 28 Minutes. Thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms, Udemy, Safari and Pact. Let's welcome our lead instructor, Ranga Rao Karanam. One of the fundamental concepts in Spring Framework is something called a component scan. If you want to make the best use of Spring Framework, you need to understand component scan in great detail. In this video, let's look at component scan and let's look at how component scan works with Spring Framework as well as with Spring Boot Framework. Think about this. What is the fundamental functionality of Spring Framework? The fundamental functionality of a Spring Framework is dependency injection. To be able to identify the beans and inject the dependencies in. So it needs to identify that I would need to create an instance of complex algorithm IMPL. I would need to create an instance of the quicksort algorithm. I would need to take the quicksort algorithm and it's the only implementation of the sort algorithm which is present. So I would need to auto wire it in here. So it needs to know all that stuff. But how does it know where to look for the beans? How does it know where it should search to find the beans? How does it know where it needs to search for at component, at service, and all that kinds of annotations? It cannot search every class which is present inside the class path because in a typical application you would might have 1000 jars or 100 jars or 50 jars and each of these jars might contain hundreds of classes. If I have to search through all the classes which are there in the class path that would be a huge performance impact. You would need to tell the Spring Framework where to search. Where do I search for components? That's where component scan comes into picture. You define a component scan stating, okay, these are all the packages you would need to search in. You need to search in the business service package as well as in the data service .stub package. These are all the places where all the beans and their dependencies are defined. So you are giving a clue to the Spring Framework using component scan to tell Okay, search for the beans here. The thing is components can can also be done with XML configuration. All that you need to do is define context components can and define which package or you can also define multiple packages you would want to scan through. Now, whenever we talk about Spring Boot, the things changes a little bit. With Spring Boot, we try to automate a lot of stuff. What Spring Boot does is as soon as you create an at Spring Boot application annotation, what it does is it does, it does an automatic scan on this specific package. So when you're using Spring Boot and you're using at Spring Boot application, you don't need to explicitly define a component scan. You don't need to say I'm going to do a component scan on this package. Why? Because Spring Boot automatically does a component scan on this specific package, whichever package your Spring Boot application annotation is there, it does a component scan of that. So if your component, if all your components are inside this specific package, then you don't really need to worry about defining a component scan. Now let's look at the troubleshooting guide where we have defined one of the important problems that a lot of people who are using Spring Boot are finding. As we discussed, if I have this class with a at Spring Boot application annotation on it, Spring Boot does an automatic component scan of this specific package. So anything in that package and the sub packages of that, you are fine, you are awesome. But what would happen if I have one of the components defined in a different package? Let's say I have one of the components defined in something else package. What would I need to do? The thing you need to do is you need to define a explicit component scan. So you can actually define an at component scan and say com in 28 minutes spring boot. You can see that both these packages, the basic spring boot in 10 steps as well as this package start with 
COM in 28 minutes spring boot. So I am using that fact to define one component scan or I can define two specific component scans. I can say scan the package where the Spring Boot application class is present as well as the new package. One of the important things is as soon as you start defining at component scan, you are taking complete control. So as soon as even though I have Spring Boot application, if I'm adding a component scan, automatic component scan will not happen in the package where Spring Boot application class is present. So in this class, whichever package is there, if I'm adding a component scan, the auto component scan which Spring does, cut, 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 the auto component scan which Spring Boot does, it's disabled. So you need to explicitly specify the default package as well as other packages. This is something which is little tricky to understand, but once you understand this, you would be able to do really, really well. So what are the typical errors that you might be facing if you have your component scan wrong? One of the things you might face is your controllers are not being scanned. So your controller is not being scanned, what would happen? The result is your URLs would not work. So you'd find things like no mapping found for a specific request. So your URLs don't work. The other kind of errors are when you don't find the dependencies. It's saying no qualifying bean of type JPA repository found for this specific dependency. So it's saying I'm expecting at least one bean to auto-wire this in, but I'm not able to find any implementation. In that kind of situation, what would be the typical problem? The typical problem would be that you don't have the component scan defined. One other problem which could happen is you are missing an annotation. So you did not put at controller, at repository, at component or at service on a specific thing. If you see any errors like this, either a missing URL or no qualifying bean of type this defined, what you can start off doing is make sure that you have the right annotation on the bean. So make sure that you have at controller, at repository or one of those annotations. The second thing is to check the component scan. Make sure that you have the right component scan defined. Make sure that your package, whichever package the component is present in, is part of the component scan. The other option, obvious, the other option obviously, is to move the component, whichever new component which is not being scanned, you can move it to the package which is under component scan. In this video, we talked about component scan. Component scan is one of the most important parts of how Spring Framework works. Spring needs to find beans and the dependencies. And how does it find it? You need to help it find the beans and the dependencies by defining a component scan. In Spring, you need to explicitly define a component scan. In Spring Boot, the package in which you put the at Spring Boot application is by default scanned for components. But if you would want to override that and add additional packages, then you are overriding the default component scan. So you need to provide the default package as well as any additional packages that you would want to use to do the component scan. In 28 minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300,000 learners across platforms like Udemy, Safari Online and Pact. We have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months. The question is, what do you want to learn next? We are building solutions to help programmers at all levels. You can learn programming with our awesome courses on Java, Python and JavaScript. You can learn full stack development with REST APIs and microservices with a wide range of frameworks like Spring Boot, Node.js, React, Angular and Spring Cloud. We have 200 plus videos to help you start your journey from a programmer to a software architect. We have videos to help you learn frameworks, industry trends, including things like microservices, learn the best practices in architecture, design, and code quality. Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 minutes.